I'm Dave Furst. The hybrid power unit era is here, and these two know all about it, right? Sure. Hopefully. <laughs> no one knows more about it, for sure. Uh, Rob Buckner, who is the IndyCar program manager for Chevrolet, and Kelvin Fu, who is the vice president of Honda Racing Corporation USA. I don't even know where to begin, but let's start here. The collaboration between these two engine manufacturers, an IndyCar it's never before seen, what was that like to work together? Obviously cutthroat on the racetrack, but to see this project reach the finish line, you had to work together, right? Rob, you wanna start? Yeah, I think we have a lot of respect for one another, how hard we push each other on the track, and yeah. just knowing uh, the level of competition that each other brings to the table. So a lot of mutual respect there, tremendous amount of talent uh, across the two programs. So it's, it's been a great project. Did you hear that? Tr tremendous amount of talent. I know, this is the nicest that Rob's ever been to us. <laughs> no, I, it, it is just two race organizations, and it's, we all just want to get things done. So it's really nice, you know, getting together with GM and Chevy and we got a project, we're gonna work together and we kind of split it up equally and then we've just, you know, moving forward as fast as we possibly can. Let's kind of break this down a little bit. Um, Honda took on the supercapacitors. Explain what a supercapacitor is. I wish I could. So, <laughs> so it's basically an energy storage device, right, for electricity. And most people are, are more familiar with batteries. So batteries are great, a lot of energy, yep. not a ton of power release cycle. It, they heat up a lot. The nice thing about the supercapacitors, and we're working with a company called Skeleton on that, yep. is that you can store a lot of power very quickly. So you can break and all of a sudden it gets filled up with power, and then when you want to release it, it goes out really quickly too. And the nice thing is it's also a lower voltage, so it's a little bit safer as we're introducing this into the paddock. You guys took on uh, the MGU, the Motor Generator Unit. In layman's terms, explain that. Uh, so there's really two parts to it. Uh, the motor part, which is taking the stored system energy from the cap capacitors, turning that into shaft power for the rear wheels, or you can take the rear wheel inertia and turn it into energy storage. So it works uh, both ways, and that's where the MGU part comes from. The MGU comes into the super capacitor, and then the power there goes back to the MGU, correct? The, the best way to describe it, yep. high-level stuff, <laughs> which is good for me. Uh, but then you got that going on, you ever open up the rear cowling of an Indy car, you look around, there's no space for anything, right? So the idea was somehow package all this into the bell housing. The bell housing usually is what? There's nothing in it. There's, there's yeah, a, it's, it's a spacer, really. Exactly. It's a lot of empty air right now. So. And so for engine, I mean, I love engineers. They're the smartest people on the planet. To come up with this concept of putting it inside the bell housing, that's pretty unique, right? Yeah, it was a great place to package something in an open wheel car. We don't have a lot of open room, so having it all together there in the bell housing really came out well. Who came up with that idea, by the way? I don't even know. I think, the, I think the we- The smartest guy in the room did. Well, I think we looked at a lot of different options, yeah. right? But a lot of it is safety too. Like if there's a crash and you don't want this electronics, you know, and so I think the bell housing was a pretty obvious place and you could package the MGU kind of close as part of the uh, drivetrain. Yeah. So it was a lot of gearing and all that stuff involved. But yeah, I, I'm not really sure who came it's, up with that concept, but it was, it was a ton of work to get it to work. It's though. fascinating, a yeah. uh, ton of work for sure. And then we've got, I got a prop. Uh, this is Colton Herta's uh, steering wheel and not a lot has changed here on the front, uh, but in the back, he's put a couple of buttons and the best way to describe it is, at least for Colton, it's driver dependent, right? There are all kinds of options for these guys, uh, but regen, uh, there's a button on the left for, for that and in the back uh, on the right side is the deploy. It, it's gonna be interesting to see how drivers uh, apply both of these, right, through the course of uh, really a lot of learnings in the last half of the season? Yeah, I think, I mean, in some ways, credit to IndyCar, right? There's a lot of options that they've introduced so the drivers and the teams can either regen with the clutch paddle above a certain speed and you can kind of do, the regen can be proportional, so less, more, 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 yeah. or you can do it like regen just with a button or the, um, and then deploy with a button, but also there's things with like braking and acceleration. There's a lot of like different options the teams can play with right now. There's a lot of options. It's gonna be interesting, I think, to see how it evolves. Uh, that second half of this season and certainly in, in 2025. I mean, do you think there'll be a commonality to this by the time it's all said and done? You, you, you drivers find a, uh, a common ground, and best, best practices, best use, I guess? So many things on the steering wheel are driving, driver dependent. Yeah. Um, they all have their 
preference of hand grips, even the size of the wheel, where the switches are, how all that works. So I'm sure within teams and organizations, there'll be some areas where it's common or even in the engine programs, but then areas where it's different. But yeah. uh, we're just looking forward to getting the system debuted this year and then pushing it harder in the future years to yeah. move it forward. And Mid-Ohio's here. I, I mean, let's just talk about the satisfaction uh, of seeing this project get across the, the finish line. Is it like Oh, like a proud father or something to, 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 to kind of sell like, here we go, this is it, right, you know? Yeah. I, 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 it is nice, I think we're engineers. Our, our, we're engineers, we like to make things and yeah. be successful and get things done. So it is, it's been a long, hard grind to get here, right? Tons of work by lots of people and teams, but yeah, it's, it's gonna be fun to see it out on track. What's the most gratifying, uh, gratifying thing for you, you think? Uh, I think, you know, getting to that first race and yeah. having the, the full field with, with hybrid yeah. Uh, it's going to be a big milestone for everyone involved. And so you guys collaborated. Uh, here it is, the hybrid power unit. Now you get back on the track and you want to kick each other's butts now. Again, once again, is that how it works? Of course. That's why yeah. you're standing between us, right? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> guys, be careful. Be careful. Thanks so much. Hey, thank Congratulations. Thank the hybrid power yeah. unit is here in 2024, uh, debuting at Mid-Ohio Sports Car Cars and coming to a racetrack near you.